Dragon Knights have been unleashed. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Hordak shall return with Friar Tuck. Oh yes, boss, you want me to go get Tuck? I'll go to his house, I'll do whatever you want. Halt! Release Friar Tuck immediately! We have to save Friar Tuck at all costs. If you want him, come and claim him. Time for you to die, Robin Hood. And once you're gone, no one will remember your name. <laughs> May this arrow of my heart be true. And bring Friar Tuck back to Black Monarch's castle as promised. <laughs> the mighty Forestman lay in defeat. Many are seriously wounded. I... I am Magisto. I seek the counsel of Merlin. The meeting of the Knights of the Round may now proceed. My younger brother, Prince John, the Knights and I are going on a crusade. I am leaving you as steward in my place. Just obey your queen. Of course, my brother. You shall count on me. Victory or death, my knights. History is on our side. I am ready. For the Lord. Let's hunt some dragons. This is gonna be fun. More than a thousand years ago, the wizard Halister Blackcoat journeyed from a distant land to the base of the mountain. No one knows exactly what drew him to the mountain. Some believe it was some kind of divine providence. Halister's true origins remain unknown, but regardless of his origins, scholars have recorded that Halister brought with him seven apprentices to the mountain with him. With the seven guarding his back, Halister tapped into his immense power to summon beings from other planes of existence to help him build a wizard's tower to dwarf all other towers. But as the seasons wore on, the seven saw less and less of their enigmatic master. Halister continued to use creatures from distant planes for tunneling and other construction beneath this tower, and the wizard kept the nature of most of his underground dealings a secret from the seven. Eventually, Halister's exploration broke into the Underhall, a complex tunnel of rooms built by dwarves around a mithril mine beneath the mountain. The architects of these Underhalls, the Malarkin clan, had long ago been killed or dispersed after the drow was also summoned to the mountain and proved to be too formidable for the dwarves to handle. The drow are dark elves or fallen elves. Tens of thousands of years ago, the elves were divided, with those with benevolent disposition battling those those that were selfish and cruel. The war among the elven kind ended with the good elves banished the malevolent kin to the subterranean depths. When news of Halister's explorations got to the leaders of the drow, they were of course drawn to the mountain as well, and that is how they had the conflict with the dwarves. Halister began a crusade against both the drow and the dwarves, participating in wild hunts with extra planar allies through the tunnel. The stubborn dwarves dug until the mithril was largely mined out, then they abandoned the inside of the mountain, leaving the drow to fight Halister and his minions alone. The Mad Mage rounded up the remaining Dark Elves, trapping some of their souls for use in his dark magic while twisting the bodies and enslaving the minds of others. Once he was wrung of the drow of their usefulness, Halister Blackcloak tunneled ever downward, indulging in his inexplicable compulsion for delving deeper and deeper into the mountain. Inside of the mountain, Halister discovered what became known as the Yawning Portal. While little is actually known of the true intentions of the Yawning Portal, what scholars and other explorers have discovered is that the portal does allow different accesses to different levels of the dungeon, with rumors that Halister occupies level 20. Using his underground complex as a base of operations, Halister traveled to other planes and distant lands collecting strange and dangerous creatures to live as servants or guardians within these dungeons. 
Populating and defending the dungeon became an obsession. Over time, the mage's preoccupation with the yawning portal electrified his eccentricities and infused him with an air of unconcealable madness. Hallister's apprentices came and some left only to return inexplicably drawn to the power of the yawning portal. Others remained by his side as they dedicated more and more attention to the private obsessions and madness settling within their souls. During the years, Halster quested on the other planes and sequestered himself in the tunnels. His magnificent tower and surrounding walls fell into ruin. In time, the city known as Nottingham developed in the shadow of the mountain and spread down to the harbor. As the city sprawled outwards over the years, it came to surround the ruins of Halister's home. The Yawning Portal was known to those early settlers, and they often sent criminals into its endless depths as punishment. So it was for many years until an intrepid adventurer named Durnan delved into the labyrinth beneath the tower and returned alive. Laden with riches and countless harrowing tales, Durnan used his new fortune to demolish the remnants of Halister's tower and build an inn over the well he had used to descend into the yawning portal. He called the inn in plain sight. Durnan owns and operates the inn and tavern to this day, serving patrons and inviting the brave and foolish alike to test their mettle in the dungeon of the Mad Maid. Before there was a castle ward or even what was recognized as an ancestor to the city of Nottingham, there was the Yawning Portal. Everything changed with the arrival of two men, a warrior named Durnan and his friend Mert. The duo were the first adventurers to return from the yawning portal laden with riches and magical treasures. While Mert used his wealth to buy a mansion, Durnan had different plans. Durnan retired from adventuring and purchased the land on which sat the deep, broad well that was the only known entrance to the dungeon. Some of the magic that Durnan looted on his successful foray into the Yawning Portal granted him a lifespan that exceeds that of an elf, and for decades Durnan left delving into the Yawning Portal to younger folk. Yet one day something drew him back. Days of waiting for his triumphant return from the dungeon turned to months and then years. For nearly a century, citizens of Nottingham thought him dead. One night a voice called up from the well. Few at first believed it could be Durnan, but folk that lived a long time vouched for it. In plain sight had passed into the hands of his ancestors, but Durnan returned with enough riches for them to quietly retire. Durnan took his customary place behind the bar, raised a toast to his safe return, and began serving his customers like he had never left. Adventurers from across Castle World and even elsewhere such as Middle-earth and the Wizarding World came to the In Plain Sight to exchange knowledge of the Yawning Portal and its dungeons. Most visitors are content to swap stories by the heart, but sometimes a group driven by greed, ambition, or desperation pays the toll for entry and descends the well. Most don't survive to make the return trip, but enough come back with riches and tales of adventure to tempt other groups to try their hand and luck at the yawning port. Located in the back room of the inn, the well was once the outer shell of Halister's mighty tower, which was demolished long ago. Its sheer walls are made of old mortared stone. Next to this orifice hangs a winch and a simple rope and pulley mechanism that Durnan, the proprietor, uses to lower adventures down the shaft and sometimes pull them up again. Durnan controls the winch himself and will transport only one adventurer at a time. The rope is stained with old blood and long enough to reach all the way to the floor of the dark room at the bottom of the well of this 140 foot shaft. Durnan charges adventurers one gold stud each to descend into the well, whether they opt to use the rope or not. The return trip also costs one piece of gold sent up in the bucket in advance. He also readily accepts coins from patrons who wants to place grisly bets on adventurers who dare to explore the yawning portal and their odds of returning alive. Five gold dragons say they'll be back before a ten day minus the fighter, wizard, and the cleric is a favor of commentary often heard among gales of drunken laughter. 
Many years ago, the kingdom of Parnast was taken over by the Red Dragons. What was once a peaceful and prospering society has become the lair of the Black Monarch. The Black Monarch built his castle in the ruins of the former castle of Parnast. Rani, the daughter of the King of Parnast, was able to escape Black Monarch's castle. To this day, she is the only person to have escaped the clutches of the Red Dragons and lived to tell the tale. Ronnie is a human rogue. Steven hails from Sherwood Forest. He is a proud member of the Forestmen. He will do anything for his friends, Forestmen or otherwise. Steven has always looked up to Robin Hood. He hopes someday to be a hero just like him. He left the protection of the Forestmen so he can prove himself to be the hero he hopes to become. Steven is a human ranger. Dr. Ray Stance is from the faraway world known as My Gen City. In his world, Dr. Ray Stance is a well-known member of the Ghostbusters. One day after a long day of busting ghosts, Ray and his fellow Ghostbusters return to their firehouse. Ray was exhausted, so he lay down for the, an evening rest. While he was asleep, he was sucked into this mystical portal. All that he was able to bring with him was his book, Tobin's Spirit Guide. Ray is a human cleric. Yalverba is the last of the green dragonborns. Many years ago, there was a great dragon war. The red dragons and the green dragons were at war with each other. It didn't matter if it were dragonborns, humans, or actual dragons, they were all at war. After many lives were lost, both sides agreed on peace. One day, a young dragonborn named Yalverba is born into a noble family. Him and the love of his life were destined to carry on the dragonborn race. Yalverba's family were against the match because she was a gold dragon and they looked down upon her. Yalverba stormed out on his family in disgust and dedicated his life to adventuring. While he was out adventuring, he received a letter from the love of his life stating that the red dragons have been hunting and killing the dragonborns and his family is dead. She also told him that her family were leaving these lands never to return. Yalverba hopes to find her again. Yalverba is a dragonborn barbarian. The party has arrived at the inn, plain sight. And inside the inn, there are uh, a number of people there. The first one that you see is Raya. She is a the waitress. What is the first thing you want to do? We want to know. Well, I know what I want to do. I want to find out if anybody knows anything about the Black Monarch. Hello, travelers. Can I get you something to eat or drink? A stout of ale will work for me. That will be one silver stud. I, can give you one. I also was wondering if you had any information on the whereabouts of the Black Monarch. Funny you should ask. That's a big talk of the town. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round are riding to the Black Monarch's castle as we speak. The Red Dragons captured Friar Tuck. Where would we go to find King Arthur in order to join his quest? He is on the Great Road to the West. Are there places in town where we can rest and get provisions? Yes, we have the Sapphire Inn, Camelot Market, Nottingham Farms, and the Captain's Daughter. Well, Nottingham sounds like a great place to start. Nottingham is the center of all trade here in the West. Excuse me, ma'am. Have you ever seen a spook scepter or ghosts? I have heard all sorts of tales from the yawning portal. You never know what you might find down there. Thank you. Now, if you excuse me, I have other patrons to attend to. And as the adventurers are drinking an ale and just kind of gathering their wits around them, this gentleman comes up and introduces himself to the party. He says, Hello, my name is Bolo. I am a famous explorer and raconteer, and I will buy you guys all a round of drinks to celebrate 
any upcoming adventures if you dare to enter the yawning portal. The first drink is on me. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. We will consider that if we ever do venture into, what did you call it? It is called the yawning portal. I need to know a little bit more about this so-called portal before I enter anything. The story dates back to the fall of the elven kingdom here in the castle world. An alabaster throne belonging to an elvish king, the, the throne disappeared from the capital city, which was where the mad mage built his tower. It is said that a group of dwarves feared the destruction of such a miraculous work of stonecraft and stole the throne right from under, out from under the elves' slender noses. Where the dwarves hid it for so long, who knows? But should you find it in the yawning portal, it would please the elves to know that it survived. Well, if we ever enter this so-called portal, maybe we will come across it and we will let you know. All right. Well, just remember, when the day comes you decide to enter, the first drink is on me. Thank you. We will remember that. Hmm. I'm just curious why he interested in us. Well, I like to frequent the in plain sight. I spend most of my time here. You know, I am a world famous adventurer, but I've gotten up in age, and so, but I, but I still love to hear the tales. And I'm always on the lookout for adventure. You also see inside the tavern is a young lady with fancy clothes that seems to be from ability or wealth. <laughs> and you also see the barmaid behind the bar. Sarah is her name. She is a ancestor of Durnan. She is a young lady that likes to keep busy, so she continues to work here in the tab. Well, hello, miss. What brings you out here today? I have been looking for my brother, Crisando Rosnar. Our family comes from high society, but my brother joined the wolf pack and brought shame to our family. The last time anyone saw him was in this very tavern. He went down into the yawning portal and hasn't returned. On the other end of the tavern, you see a man dressed in fine clothing, and he is drinking an ale and standing next to a peculiar fireplace with green flames. Hello, sir. May I ask, why are those flames green? That, my dear, is flu flame. Blue flame is the only way to travel if you are a wizard or have knowledge of wizard magic. And what I mean knowledge, I mean you must be able to perform wizard spells. But even if you are not a wizard, you can still use the flu flame to travel to the wizarding world, a whole other continent. All you have to do is pay a small fee to whoever owns the fireplace that the flu flame is in to get the flu power. But my name is Horace Slughorn. I am a well-known master of potion from Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And I have traveled here to procure magical items from the Yawning Portal. I have booked a room at the Sapphire Inn, and I hope to hire adventurers to plunder the dungeon of its magical Richard. I will pay handsomely for any magical items found in the Yawning Portal. All of my funds come from Gringotts Bank. I will pay money for these magical items far more than you will find anywhere else. And the rarer the item, the more, the more I shall pay. Well, that sounds like an interesting proposition. Maybe we will come back to the, to here to, what did you call it? Flu flames? Yes, flu flames. Hmm, that is definitely interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, you are welcome, my dear. So what are the names of all the shops and everything in and around Nottingham? Yes, the Sapphire Inn, Camelot Market, Magisto's Magical Workshop, Nottingham Farms, and The Captain's Daughter. The Captain's Daughter is actually right across the alley from here. And here is The Captain's Daughter. 
gray stone building and out in front of it you see Captain Red himself. He says, Yar, welcome to the captain's daughter. I can get you any number of travel across the seven seas. What might be of interest to you? We're weary travelers looking to join King Arthur's crusade. Are there any items that you could sell to us to help us with our journey? Yar, I don't sell items, Bass. I, I'm strictly here set up travel. Oh, my apologies. I misunderstood Sarah from the In Plain Sight. She sent us here, and I was under the impression that you sold wares. No, we don't sell anything here We except for seats on ships across the open seas. Ah, okay. Well, if we ever need any passage through the open seas, we know where to go. All righty. Have a good day. And the travelers make their way into Camelot Market. And inside of Camelot Market, they see a weapon stand and provision stands where they can buy any number of items. I'm thinking pick cat. So that is three silver studs. And our travelers make their way to the northeastern section of town on the edge of town. And there they see Nottingham Farms. And Nottingham Farms is the place where you can purchase any animal, carriage, or anything else that interests you that you want to add to your adventuring party. And this is Sir Hustlor. He is the owner of Nottingham Farms. He is one of the more wealthy individuals in all of Nottingham. Come on down to Nottingham Farms. We got horses, we got pigs, we got sheep, we got carriages. What do you need? What do you need? We got it for sale here at Nottingham Farms. Good afternoon, Sir Hustlor. What do you have for sale? Well, I'm glad you asked, my dear. Let, let, let me show you exactly what we have for sale today, because my inventory is always changing here at Nottingham Farm. And here we go. Today, we have horses for sale, war horse, carriage, cart, ponies, goats, pigs, sheep, chicken, dogs, cats, and cows. Um, the goat should be 100 gold, because it's rare to find. Well, you certainly have a lot of of merchandise to purchase. Unfortunately, I do not have very much treasure or gold right now, but I don't, I don't I need think, any. I think I might want to purchase a kitty cat. You want to purchase a cat, my dear? Well, that you that is awesome. So that will be one gold stud. And you have the pick of the litter, my dear. Here's my one gold stud, Sir Hustlor. And I think I will take that cute little orange one I see back there. I shall name him Keith. That is a lovely name, my dear. Thank you so much, Sir Hustlor. You have been most helpful. Does anyone else want to buy any animals? I do. What, what would you like, sir? You would also would like a cat. Well, that will be one gold stud. Here's my gold stud. And you, sir, have the pick of the litter. Which one would you like to procure? Procure. I think that little cute little gray one. Well, he is yours then. I, I shall name her Godzilla. Okay. Fantastic <laughs> name. <for him>. <laughs> <laughs> Steven says, I am good. I have my pet dog here, Baymax. Baymax. So I have my animal needs are taken care of for now. Do the heroes want to make their way to the jousting tournament area to see how they fare against a knight in combat? Yes, sure. We could all use some practice before we join the crusades. And also, on your way out of town, on the road to the west, make sure you stop and visit Magisto's Magical Workshop. That's where you can procure health potions and other magical items. Ooh. 
we'll definitely be stopping there. But like I said, it is on the it is on the, right outside of town. So I guess we'll be heading there. <laughs> but I need some practice first before I can fight. Well, Stephen says I want to take my chance at this. I I I'm going to go up to one of the knights and challenge him to a duel. I. A race stance, I will challenge a knight to a duel as well. And Ronnie challenges a knight as well. Yeah, Verbe, he decides to stay on the sidelines for this one. And here is Dr. Ray stance out to the quick start, as is Ronnie and Steven is having a little bit of a struggle. Dr. Ray stance gets in a big hit. Ronnie takes a shot on the arm. Look at it there. Big hit. And Steven takes a slash right on the chest. And Yell Verbe still is watching intently. Ray Stance lands a big strike on the knight's chest. And here is Ronnie with a strike of her own. Look at it right in the gut. And here's Steven with a big slash right across the chest. They're all getting their hits in in this round. But here, look at Dr. Ray Stance takes a shot right on the side of this chest. And Ronnie gets in another big hit for Ronnie. Steven's fighting strong. He's not going to go down without a fight. That is for certain. Dr. Ray Stance, the cleric, is still fighting strong. Look at him go. And here Ronnie takes another shot on the arm. And Steven also takes a strike right on the arm. And here Dr. Ray Stance, look at him go. He's putting on the pressure. He's going in for it. He's going in for it. Here it comes. Dr. Ray stands with the big finishing blow. Ronnie's jousting career begins at an 0-1 record. Poor Steven, he also starts at 0-1. But look at here, Dr. Ray stands the cleric, he starts 1-0. And yeah, Verba still sits on the sidelines. And now our adventurers take the rest for the evening, set up camp, and have a good night's sleep. Well, that is my video for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me how you feel about this new series down in the comments. Are you enjoying it? Which character is your favorite? Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching. And don't forget, we got merch store. If you want to take a little piece of the show with you, you can get it right here. We got everything. You want some Mikey J stuff? We got the Mikey J Productions for you. So take a chance and stop by. We'll take care of you.